Welcome back, MTG Joe here, and uh, we're going to be playing some more post band standard. Uh, so we played a couple cool decks so far, Esper Doom, Sultai, kind of mid-rangey creatures. Uh, we just wrapped up Teamer Elemental Ramp, which was awesome. Um, and now we're going to be playing Black-White Aristocrats, Black-White Sacrifice, Black-White, Don't if you kill my creatures, you're going to take damage. Um, so... This is kind of an archetype that's been around in some variations. Uh, we saw Luris being kind of the linchpin of a lot of these sacrifice decks pre-companion rule change. Um, so it's kind of still in the deck. We have Luris uh, within, playing two of. Still very good in this kind of theme. Um, but what we're really trying to use with this deck for is um, leveraging off uh, Luminous Broodmoth. So this is a powerful effect uh, that hasn't seen much play. Uh, whenever a creature dies, if it doesn't have flying, it comes back to the battlefield to flying counter on it. So what you can do is kind of sacrifice your creatures, get them back, and then sacrifice them again. And then you kind of drain your opponent out with Cruel Celebrant and Bastion of Remembrance uh, to deal some damage there. So you have the familiar Cat Oven combo. Um, it's been around a while. It is one of the most powerful things you can be doing right now. Um, so it is a very good interaction here. You have Serrated Scorpion, Priest in here, and then the combination of Woe Strider. So you have basically a 11 sacrifice outlets in the deck. Midnight Reaper refills your hand, Rem uh, Bastion gives you a token and kind of duplicates the Cruel Celebrant effect. You have Call the Death Dweller to get things back as well, so you kind of play from there. Um, mana base, got some castles in there. Uh, one thing I did want to point out, and some people had asked when I posted this uh, deck list on Instagram, uh, why playing the Trinomes over uh, Temples? Um, this gives you the same dual land but has the upside that the castles come into play untapped with this, as well as late game you can cycle this. So we're not really looking necessarily for key pieces in this deck. Um, it's more just like volume of things. There's a lot of interchangeability. Really what you want is one sort of sack outlet, and then a brood moth, and then some sort of drain effect. And then from there you can kind of usually piece it together. So I prefer that. Uh, the sideboard wise, uh, Soul Guide Lantern, we need to exile graveyards. Tithe Taker is good against like Teamer Wreck, any of the Flash decks, stuff like that. Uh, Agonizing Remorse versus Control. Uh, some Mixed Removal and Heartless Act, Noxious Grasp, and Dispark where needed. Um, so we're going to kind of try to bully our opponents. I got up to Diamond Tier 2 with uh, the Teamer Ramp deck. Uh, I actually haven't played too much of this deck, so maybe let's do a Unranked first. Uh, the Teamer Wreck ramp deck I played a lot off stream this one I've only ever played once so I want to run it through see how it is before we take it to the rank ladder um, something I usually like to do with newer brews uh, just to get a feel with it being so new into like post ban I haven't had too much time to test out a lot of these I've been trying to do just more build out the decks but let me know what's been working well for you in the comments uh, with the new standard I've been playing a lot of Jund oven as well so this hand's really slow so we're gonna pass it away this hand is great. Um, I actually think Luris right now. Luris is better late game. This has more upside, but we also have three copies of this, so maybe we get put this back. So I'm going to lead on Scorpion on one. It's better against Mono Red or stuff like that with the two toughness. This also lets me play Oven as well. So I can go... I'm going to play this in case they have Shock. Okay, Opt. So this can probably be Teamer Wreck. So as we wait for the opponent... Um, if you are enjoying the content on the channel, as always, and you want to show your support for free, uh, you can either subscribe on YouTube or follow on Twitch. Both are free and easy ways to help support the channel. Um, so I can... It's Teamer Wreck. So I can leave this in the graveyard and then cast Luris and then get it back. For damage and then keep a food token up. Should probably do that. So let me attack in first. Oh, actually, that's dumb of me. Forgot we were off a of mana. 
Ah, poor sequencing there. This opens it up for like a shock or something. And we missed a point of damage, which could be relevant in this matchup. So now we'll just drain them. Yeah, that was poor sequencing. For whatever reason, I was thinking it was a free death trigger. Um... Go Cruel Celebrant here. Fortunately, our lands aren't being too cooperative right now. I don't have the option with Cruel Celebrant to be able to sack something right away and hit them. Yeah, this is most likely Teamer Wreck. Should be dead. Cruel Celebrant's going to deal some damage to them. Main board, they usually only have like Flame Sweep, but Flame Sweep kills them. Flame Sweep would deal 4, 5, because I could bring back the cat, and then it drains, so they're still dead. Sharknado. May still be dead here. So what I can do is sack here, it dies, and then it deals the 3 damage. Alright, so this is a Tithe Taker and Agonizing Remorse matchup. Probably also Dispark. So the thing is, I don't want to get rid of too much of the synergy of the deck. Priest isn't that good, just gets caught up with Flame Sweep. Probably cut Cruel Celebrant in this matchup. It's not the best attacker. I like these. This refills our hand. This is the part when you're playing like a synergy deck. This is more resilient as well. So maybe cut a Mothra on the top end. Cut a Woe Strider. Do it like that. Just trim along the edges. The one thing we don't have is um, artifact removal. So maybe we want that in the sideboard. Uh, something like disenchant for cage. So instead of the spark. But likely opponents aren't playing graph diggers cage because they, uh, they usually play Uro. I think based on this hand, I might actually keep Mothra over Luris. Post board, they're more likely to have Flame Sweep. So at least, like, if they Flame Sweep, this survives that. This is a case where with the Trinomes now, I can play this land out if we don't hit a spell and then just cycle it. That's actually pretty good. So I'm going to attack first. They have something like... Um, uh, Scorching Dragonfire. They're going to target the Woe Strider, but you could potentially get them to target here. Trigger on the stack. 
So this is actually pretty good because this means they likely don't have the flame sweep. Which means if I drop Mothra next turn, overall pretty solid. They shock in. This could be a counter spell, which is pretty bad. Okay. That resolves is good. So next turn, cycle this. Fortunately, with the exile, getting Woe Strider back would have been good because we could have sacked these, drained them, and then get them back, and then sack them and drain them again. Uro is padding their life total quite nicely. Perfect. play this out now that I want to start maybe like um, getting this back so each of these virtually represent four points of life loss I'm just escaping away here okay they got the wreck Wait here. Celebrant's great. Are they dead? Maybe. So sack, sack. And then bring him back with Death Dweller and then sack, sack. And then you kill him out like that. Uh, let's take this ranked see if we can hit mythic with it so that's pretty impressive taking down team of ramp and that was through they hit three arrows that game so they got a virtual extra nine life uh, in addition to just not really doing much else they could have like done a shark there Luris, this hand's a bit slow. It's like it's clunky with all the three drops. This hand's better. I'm gonna put calls back, I think. Really just wanna hit a third land here. If I can get Woe Strider every turn, sack the Serrated Scorpion and get it back with Luris, it'd be good. Actually, Mono White Devotion is something I want to probably revisit here. This could be cycling. I haven't run into too much cycling. I'll see. All right, give me a land, 40% chance. 40% chance plus a whole bunch of one drops or two drops. Anything here would be great. Uh, this is um, the mono white deck. Uh, put a whole bunch of things on it. Uh, Literal only tap land. In fact, this has vigilance as well, and the life link is going to be quite annoying. So, the nice thing, because it's not on a flyer, it's pretty good. Okay, so this turn. I'm gonna go Woe Strider. This allows me to block and then sack the token so they don't get the draw. 
and then I can hopefully get Bastion going and with Woe Strider. This deck doesn't usually play removal. Ah, shit. Well, now they got flying, so... Now we're in a bit of trouble. Okay, so here... We have two options. I can go Luris or Bastion. I think we go Luris. I need to try to get a Priest. So this can buffer my life total a bit. Midnight Reaper is a little bit too um, dangerous right now for us. Because they're hitting us for a lot, I don't want to take the incidental damage. So I could sack the Serrated Scorpion to Scry. We will lose a point of damage. I haven't made this unblockable. It's an extra point of damage. Second all seed. I think we do this sack it now just to set up our draw. Don't want serrated here. Oven's not bad. Let's go Bastion. So here we're effectively gaining three life a turn. Uh, two from this dying. And then one from the Bastion. This just didn't have Vigilance, and we could start putting some pressure on them. I just want to keep dodging, like, all that glitters. This might just be put this in hand. Now that we have Bastion out, I'll sack these to Scry more. Just in case they have like pump effects. If we can get a cat, would also be good. Just being able to loop cat each turn gains us some extra life. stone coil I can have uh, blockers back for it mm. I want to get rid of this human token I suppose it's fine because the thing is I could actually I'm short of white mana to be able to art and veil what's in my graveyard Actually, probably fine. So 
So what I can do here, I get the extra scry this turn. Do not want Trinome. So I can do this. Sack this. We're just trying to drain him out here. If I can get a second Bastion, it's also good. Cruel Celebrant's great. The Death Touch here is also relevant. I can block something like that. Cruel Celebrant will then let me drain them for four a turn. Ah, no, 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 no. Hushbringer turns off our death. So now I need to find something else. Because Hushbringer, hey, Master Chief. Uh, it's going well. We played the Team Elementals deck earlier today. I'll have it up on YouTube later tonight. It was wild. That deck's awesome. I can't win at this point. I don't have anything to deal with. With this. This stupid card kills our deck. Ah, because it dies, I can't really play around it. Hey, Meister, how's it going? So, Noxious Grass, Heartless Act, in, out. Um, Priest is very good in this matchup. Could probably get rid of a Call of the Death Dwellers. Probably a couple Midnight Reapers. Probably all the Midnight Reapers. It's going well. Other than needing a haircut desperately. Nothing really to complain about. Mainboard Hushbringer. We found the one deck in ranked that actually just shuts off our entire strategy. Because I'd be able to hit a, drain him for four a turn. And then I break parity with the damage they're dealing until I can find something else. No, we're still under, like, uh, it's not as deemed essential for us yet. Yeah, I'm probably just going to grow it out for now, same with the beard. I work a bank job, so normally I can't look like this disheveled. But uh, I've always wanted to grow my hair out. So it's an opportunity. It's just that it's at like that awkward stage of curling. Uh, let's go Cauldron Familiar. Okay, because I want that. Let's just do this. Best draw would be a land, so I can go Heartless Act and Witch's Oven. Land one time. Let's run it back. I'm actually surprised that the Devout Decree seems like something better on the cat. Yeah, they um, they had said that we could potentially start going, but then with the warm weather, people started getting a little too adventurous. So now we're seeing a spike in cases again. There's like this uh, big park where the first day of summer, pe just like tons and tons of people. So it's actually not bad because I can Heartless Act it. I'm going to Heartless Act it now. 
as opposed to on their turn because they do run protection spells. The funny thing is, so I started a new job during COVID quarantine. So I've only ever met my manager. I haven't met anyone on my team yet. Um, so this strikes me as they have a protection spell. So I'm going to let them spend their mana on their turn. That way we can tax them. Not hitting a land here also kind of hurts. So, in particular, you want to make sure you're removing the counters here. So they probably have like the dive down. Yeah, here, Metro's Blessing. So it wasn't enchanted, but it does give him plus two. The trample's relevant here. So we'll just gain some life here. With a third oven in hand, we may be able to just drain them out. This might just be one of those games where we win off the back of cats and ovens. They don't have a life gain spell, especially if I just drop a, a land and I, I drain them for two each turn. Yeah, I probably want Disenchant in the deck. Opponent did start this game double Devote Decreeing us, and we've just never drawn a second land. Um, so far on the ladder, I've had like mixed results. I've played, um, like, Jund Oven. I'm 3-0 with it. It's just quite taxing to play. It's one of those decks that involves a lot of thinking. Like, you win sometimes out of nowhere, but at the same time, you do need to go through the, the actions. Um, the Teamer Ramp deck I played is a lot of fun. Uh, it runs four Genesis Ultimatums, and I've won basically... Like, I've cast Finale of Devastation for 35. You can play, like, a whole bunch of spells. Otherwise, if you can tolerate it, Teamer Rex's probably good. I just don't enjoy playing that deck. Noxious Grasp doesn't help here. You do have an answer for Hushburner, which is good. You just give flying. I don't care about flying. I don't think any of the results yet have come out. You have Jeskai Luka built. There's basically it's, it's Jeskai Luka, but you replace the agent with four Dream Trawlers. And that's pretty much the deck. Um, I think we run it back. They brought in Devout Decree, which is exile anyways. So we'll probably just run it like this. Yeah, because the thing is, so the only deck really right now that could answer consistent like a dream trawler consistently is either a big enough shark if only this was a black mana um go 
like that or like a priest with nothing else on board but usually with those Jeskai decks you also have um, like other style effects like uh, token makers so you can get around the sacrifice yeah tokens sorry like half my head's been out of it today before I came on stream I put on a cup of coffee to uh, like a pot of coffee so I poured everything in the, the coffee maker and then when I, I I turned it on I went to the washroom I come back and then I realize I didn't actually put the carafe so ended up spilling coffee all throughout the, the kitchen it was like four cups of coffee all over the floor and everything the warm weather is getting to my head. So I opted to kill it there while I uh, tapped out of the white mana. This could just be a devout decree turn. Get stone coil too. So here I actually have the option. Actually I don't. It's not a heartless act. So we have no option. So we're going to get priest going. So I can go Priest, Sack. Unfortunately, I have to Sack the Luris. Yeah, it was one of those, like, thankfully my wife's not home. Otherwise, she would have yelled at me. So they spent their turn getting Luris. No blocks here. So let's poke him for one. Cast Priest. Activate Priest. Sack these two. And now I can cast my Luris. Yeah, I still think I cast my Luris this turn. And then cast the cat from the graveyard. Yeah, the the, um, the celebrant will be good to just drain him through some extra points of damage, because their turn's probably going to be Luris here, and then recast the stone coil. Okay, they go soul guide lantern. So that makes it a little bit trickier, but if they just drop Luris this turn, then I'm just going to kill it with the noxious grasp, and then drop this cruel celebrant. Okay, all seed. Still not the best draw for them, so I think we... So this is where it gets a little tricky. I can hold this. I think holding it for Luris is better. I'm going to have to force them to get rid of this anyways, so I'd rather do this now. Yeah, it's got a lot of ways. Like, they game one Hushbringer to us, and I had, like, a really nice setup going. But they, like, I couldn't do anything to it. Okay, so Oven's not great here. Be honest, I'm probably just doing this. They have like an exile effect. Yeah, in general, the matchmaking is a little weird. Like it was the other day. I played Doom Foretold, my list, and we actually got queued up to someone playing my exact list. And, like, I play a couple weird things in the list. Um, so it's not something, like, 
super unorthodox. Okay, so I'm going to Noxious Grasp the Luris. I'm going to play Priest here. I think we just attack. Because they have to block anyways. Actually, just hold this back. Because if they... Yeah, so like, I haven't run into Doom Foretold probably for months. And then to run into someone playing like my identical list. So I can sack this so they don't get the card draw. I think we do. They're pretty desperate if they're targeting our own thing. That should wrap it up. Sick. Alright, we avenge the Hushbringer. Okay, so I'm gonna wrap this one up. Actually, I only got to play that one game of Esper Dance. Let me just uh, wrap up this video. So I can get it up on YouTube and then we'll play a game of Esper Dance.